Hey everyone, welcome to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I want to give a thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this episode. Manscaped is the leader in men's grooming products. Join the 9 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and try their new cutting edge Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. Of course, you get 20% off plus free shipping when you use my code Holly at manscaped.com. All right, everyone. So my guest today is a multi-ABN and XBiz nominated performer, actor, streamer, and director. She has a passion for creating art both behind and in front of the camera, and I am thrilled to talk to the lovely Evelyn Claire today. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Very good. Very good. I Lawnmower? Is, is that the product? Oh, yes. That's the product name. What kind of hair are they cutting? You know cutting? what? I mean, have you met my husband? There's some men who have a lot of body hair. I do like and, them hairy. Um, I do too. But, you know, sometimes you want that hair strategically placed. Yes, of course. And, you know, some guys have so much hair, one could consider it a lawn. And, um, you know, that's when you need the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Amazing. Thank you so much for helping me to actually of course. I was just curious give my that. sponsors an extra plug. Manscaped's going to be very excited about this. <laughs> Oh, all right. Yes. Anyways. <laughs> so now that we've gotten the issue of men's body hair out yes. of the way, um, let's start, you know, as I like to do from the beginning, tell us about how you got into the adult industry, Evelyn. Oh, man. Well, I had six jobs in one year, um, all customer service, all just like for like low entry, like, you know, just like your first gig, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just graduated high school and I was like always doing two jobs at a time. I was working my ass off for nothing, you know, and it was 2015 and my friend was like, yeah, um, I just started camming on Chatterbait and I'm like, oh, Chatter what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what is camming? What is that? Like, I'd never heard of it. Yeah. Never even really watched porn. Like my porn was like fine art like <laughs> fine art was your yeah. porn huh yeah it was <laughs> like a little like art perv and so i was like okay well i've had long distance boyfriends it can't be too different like yeah. you know and so i just kind of like made my account and just like jumped into it and i would stream like every day for like 12 hours a day and i just like put my whole <laughs> life into it as soon as i woke up he chat you know yeah. like and I'm so tired. I'd, I'd have dreams that I was still streaming, and that's when I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take a step back. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is a little unhealthy. <laughs> Tell us about, like, your first ever show on Chatterbait. So what was that like? Was it what you expected? Like, like the first stream? Yeah. Um, your first, your first like, dipping your toe into the adult industry. Like, you know, because I'm... I, it was, like, the integrated webcam and everything, that yeah. whole experience. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, Oh man, I had a donut sweater on and I had one of my paintings behind me and mm -hmm. I'm sitting on my bed and it's just like off my laptop and I'm just like, this chat's going so fast. I'm getting nauseous from trying to read it. Like it's just going so fast. Cause you're new, right? That and new so, tag. Yeah. So when you're new like that, you get like flooded. You get flooded. People, right? Yeah. If you don't milk that new tag, you're, you're not taking, um, advantage of the promotional tool that it could be right right and um oh my god yeah no i had like five thousand views i made like 500 bucks in like two hours and as soon as i logged off i threw up and i didn't even like show anything and it flashed i was just answering questions you threw up once you I, logged I off threw up. <laughs> i was so nauseous from the chat going so oh, fast oh so like it was actually <laughs> it wasn't nerves <laughs> it was like a visual yeah, yeah. Wow. It doesn't happen anymore, but, like, it was just, like, that first time, I, it, like, actually made me physically ill. <laughs> but I loved it. I but was, you like... You still stayed on for two hours. Yeah, I was, like, oh, my God, I'm not... I don't have to go back to working at Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't have to roll pretzels anymore. So you made $500 <laughs> in two hours. Basically, yeah. How long did it take you to make $500 at your other job? Um, like, two weeks or something, you know? It was when, like, minimum wage was, yeah. like, $8, maybe. Yeah. Wow. If you're lucky. And only like 16 hours a week because they didn't want to give you like full benefits and stuff, oh, you know? Right. So, like, not. yeah, yeah. I, was, it was, I was always working my ass off so hard, you know? And I, I loved talking to people. I was always like, like the customer service person. And 
So like it just translated to camming so easily because it was just like, read the question out loud, answer it, you yeah. know, like, and then go on a spiel, read another question, you know, just like I could rinse and repeat that all damn day. Right. And you said that you didn't even take your clothes off on the no. first one. So what was the second stream like? I don't remember. I don't know. It's just kind of like all a blur. I, I just kind of like started doing what I thought you were supposed to do and what you right. could do, you know, and like whatever I was comfortable with doing. I had my right. first kiss with a girl on camera, like, you know, like I fingered my butthole for the first time on camera, you know, like I never even like touched my butthole. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I'll try it. Wow. So it was really like a sexual I, I felt like I was you. being like encouraged to be like an absolute filthy, you know, person. I yeah. Just, I, I needed that. I, I had so much fun with it. Yeah. You know? So how long did you cam for before you started shooting scenes? I think I was contacted um, by Greg Lansky for my Vixen stuff. Um, maybe 2001 or two or 2019. Probably 2019. Before I don't know. It's COVID? been so long. It, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then yeah, it would have yeah, been. Because I was in Pleasure in 2018. So wait, no, maybe it was 2017. Maybe, I see, I, I don't keep track, but I've been in so long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like... <laughs> so, okay, so you were camming. How long were you camming before he contacted you? I think it was, like, a good solid two years. Because okay. I remember going to AVNs and, like, meeting people and being all starstruck. Because I was like, oh, my God, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've only seen you on the internet. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I think, I think it was the year after that. Because, like, I just, I don't know. I don't know how I did it. But yeah. I, I got in there. <laughs> so Greg Lansky contacts you. Yes. To shoot for Vixen, which mm -hmm. is like a high-end brand. Yeah. Um, Not many people get to have that as their first. Yeah. So were you surprised to hear from him? I, I thought it was a joke. I'm like asking. And there were a lot of fake Greg Lanskys going around doing fake bookings, okay. actually. So yeah, I that can... was like a problem. <laughs> I, I remember. I can only imagine. Yeah. I got contacted by a fake Greg No Lansky. way. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I. I do I you want to shoot Greg's... your first porno with yeah, us? Yeah. And I'm like, let me just text the real Greg Lansky and ask him if he sent this. No, he did not. Oh my gosh. That's so crazy. So, okay. So you were. So what was your first scene then? Was... Um, so we shot uh, for Vixen and Blacked. They had the Blacked shoot first okay. even though the vixen shoot released first right um and so my first experience was working with jason brown and with laurent as the director mm. and he was just you know like angel face baby like you know like her hair her hair is not yeah, right laurent is, is very french but he'd show me the photo and mm -hmm. i'd be like i look like that yeah that's me like oh okay you know like and then i just like opened up and i just yeah. like had a great time and then the the vixen one was with uh jean valjean who is amazing <laughs> i remember jean valjean such a very lover. well such a lover yeah. yeah i shot him a bunch of times he yeah. was great the porn industry misses him i mean I've, i saw him recently uh at like a party thing yeah but he's not shooting porn anymore mm -hmm. is he i don't know jean valjean <laughs> if you are shooting porn come back to us we need you <laughs> i'm sure he'd come back <sighs> but I, get, I got the feeling last time i saw him that he misses some some of the ladies <laughs> yeah i'm sure i'm sure i mean you know everyone loved working with him. he's so handsome yeah i know he was beautiful and i think that's why like that vixen scene did really well because we looked really nice together you mm -hmm. know like I, I i i've always been so thankful that my first like pornos were with attractive people yeah <laughs> and like the footage that you were proud of yeah and i don't look back on it. i'm just well i'm okay the first time i watched my first pornos of course it was like hypercritical and i was like okay well i need arch more <laughs> you know point your toes yeah oh <laughs> like... girl don't get me started on fucking toe pointing <laughs> oh god it's like my pet peeve when people don't do that mm -hmm. <laughs> so with it was that the first time you'd done boy girl was those scenes uh well i mean i'd done like couple shows and stuff on chatterbait okay. but that doesn't even compare to right a, a mainstream studio yeah so. so how did you feel afterwards did you feel like okay this is something i can do i was so jazzed i was so like oh my god like this is this is cool where am i going from here like this like wow like <laughs> i couldn't believe it i just like um, kind of like imposter syndrome trigger almost yeah. like I don't me like I'm <laughs> that's crazy so how long did it take you to find like your niche in the industry to feel comfortable and that it was like something that you could do I don't know if I have 
like have a niche maybe i mean like if i do i'm kind of unaware of it Mm -hmm. maybe i bring a certain vibe that you know works but you know i try to always like act like a chameleon you know as an actor you know like figure out what what kind of mood to bring you know and stuff of the characters Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know because there's a big difference between a 18 year old virgin Mm -hmm. uh aggressor (laughs) and like getting seduced by your uncle or whatever (laughs) like it's just very different vibes. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what my niche is. I mean. What do you enjoy doing? Like, what's your favorite kind of scene to shoot? Mm. I mean, I always found, like, the best, like, scenes were the ones where it's just, like, a lot, a lot of pretty girl moments. You mm-hmm. know, like, that's, as soon, as soon as they're like, okay, we need five minutes of uh, this position and you eating her pussy. And it's like, it kind of like kills the magic of it. Like, yeah. a, you know, it's like, okay, now we're, we broke the scene. But like when those little moments where like, you know, the girls are just like being gentle with each other. I just think it looks so magical. Yeah. Like, you know, like those moments are so cute. <laughs> I think that probably also depends on who you're working with, right? Oh, yeah. Because you vibe obviously better with some people than others. Mm. Yeah. Who are some of the people that you feel like you've had the most chemistry with shooting? Oh, man. I mean, it's been so long. Like, I haven't shot a porn for... I mean, my last porno was, like, in November two years ago. Mm. So that, yeah. That, I don't know if I still have chemistry. I'm kind of... I'm, I've been getting around trying to, like, rebuild some, like, you know, chemistry. Yeah, I still got it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I've been flirting and you know like testing the waters again and stuff and making little plans um but god no one like comes front to center in my mind um who I worked with in the past you know because like I'll be frank I feel like a lot of my scenes weren't setting the setting it up for that kind of like connection it's Mm -hmm. just like okay, we're playing homeless chicks today. It's kind of hard to, (laughs) oh, we're playing, you know, like (laughs) this weird situation. I don't know. Okay, we're, you know, like I yeah, feel like I've gotten a lot of short sticks. Right. So you, so then, so you left the industry for a bit. So are you kind of coming back into it now? I mean, no, yes. Like my my foot will always be half in and half out. Mm -hmm. Like I want to stand directly over the line because- in porn, people are like, you belong in mainstream. In mainstream, they want me to play the hot chick. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, like, I'll be in both then. You know, I'll find that fine line that marries the two, you know. I, I want to do, like, sexy content. Like, it would be a shame mm-hmm. if I didn't, like, you know, do the hot girl thing. But I also just think that there, I have more than just, like, you know, more than just pussy and holes, you know, mm-hmm. like, so. I mean, it sounds like you, you mentioned that you kind of come from, like, an art background. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, one of the only awards I ever received in my life was, like, in third grade, I got a little bookmark that said Best Artist Award, and that's when I realized, hey, I might be better <laughs> than I think at this, and I oh, should wow. keep going, and I, like, loved the praise. I was like oh, people will think I'm cool if I'm good at something like this. And so I just kept working on, you know, becoming better. And I'd, like, draw $25 portraits of my friends, you know, for gas money. And (laughs) I'd just, like, draw people's dogs, you know. People Mm -hmm. were like, oh, will you make me a tattoo design? You know, and I just did all that, like, stuff that artists kind of get pushed into and Mm -hmm. stuff. But I loved making little videos. And so, like, you know, like, my art... My artistic creativity, like, expanded over every single thing, like, sculpting, painting, you know, like, performance art, Mm -hmm. you know, like, all of it is just, like, you know, stagecraft. Like, I love to build a set, like. Really? (laughs) Oh, yeah. The adult industry needs more set builders, I'm just (laughs) saying, like, Carrie and Andy are always booked. (laughs) Yeah, you. (laughs) I love that stuff. (laughs) I can use a drill. (laughs) I can. I know. I, I I love all that stuff, and like in high school, I um, I took you know I was a drama kid, and I did intro to film, you mm-hmm. know, and like I I directed a play. Oh wow! When I was in a sophomore, and I that's when I realized like oh, I enjoy like you know kind of like 
okay, now kiss. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like people, you know, like it's so cool to be able to, all right, here's here's the story and now let's act it out. Like to bring something to life is just like such a cool experience. And then like to have a set and like to just transport yourself to a different world is just like, that's the ultimate form of play. You mm-hmm. know, like that's how I have fun. So, yeah. Like, so, so when you like, left the adult industry mm-hmm. often when people like leave it's <laughs> i just more, moved away <laughs> yeah or, like, it's more like stopping shooting for like the big studios mm-hmm. right and doing more personal content yeah. is that kind of how your yeah transition the away new was age a quit bit? Yes. yeah the new age quit right <laughs> just start working for yourself yeah i mean so well, is you, that you kind of what you were doing you, you couldn't shoot for companies if unless you had a, you know an s corp or like some sort of business for yourself right? right so once i became incorporated i was like Oh my god! I'm the president of my own company. I'm literally a boss. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I'm just like I kind of like realize like oh, sh- I I could I could take this to whatever level I want to now that I'm like actually on paper legitimate. You mm-hmm. know, like this is a thing, and so like you know it's just oh I can I can have my own production company. I can you know like. So how did the work that you do start to change then? Did you start like creating your own scenes? Were you hiring people at all? Were you just like. I just started writing. Yourself. I start, I'd like have like a like a daydream. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that'd be cool. I should do a video like where I, you know, da da da. And then it would evolve into a thing. I'm like, okay, I gotta write it down. And so mm-hmm. I just start writing it down, and then show it to some friends. They're like, yeah, this seems cool, but like, should I shoot it? <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Let's see if I can. <laughs> so would this video be starring you or other people? You and other people? Yeah, me and other people. I don't really want to be a focus okay. on the content that I want to make just because it is just not possible to be yeah, to writer, director, producer, actor, yeah. and <laughs> yeah. like all the things. Like So like it, I'll be in it just, mm-hmm. you know, because I think my fans would like to see me in it. Yeah. But I don't want to ever be like the main focus of like the things I'm writing. I'm, for now. Right. For now. So is this stuff that you were creating for, like, then your own personal content platforms, like OnlyFans and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, and but the thing is I'm, I'm doing safer work stuff because okay. my idea is if I can create stuff that will – that can't be censored because there's nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not a promotional piece for a, a porno, you know. It's not just a teaser. It's mm-hmm. – this is just, it's just is what it is. It's a short film. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just like something to, you know, like look back on years from now. Like, oh, that was that was a cute little video. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this the sound the soundtrack slaps, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, just like something to look back on that I was proud of and that it was a fun day. Mm-hmm. You know, like th- that's kind of the goal here. It's like a, a passion project. I'm not doing it for the money. Right. You know? Right. Like I'm doing it because I can. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've done those. I've I've done those. But then it's like you have to do the work to get the money to pay for it, right? Yeah, I mean, I obviously couldn't just like, you know, do this when I was on Burger King, right. you know, salary, so. Right. So working <laughs> in the adult industry kind of gave you that that income where you were able to oh, yeah. realize these passion projects. Yeah. So so you're I'm assuming writing and directing these pieces. Are you filming it as well or do you have a cameraman for that? I've, I've been hiring people. Mm-hmm. Um this last uh, production I did, it's called The Gentle People, and it I sunk a lot of money into it, but I had a wardrobe person, I had makeup artists, I had like... Makes a difference, right? Oh my gosh, you know, like, and I had I had a lot of help, I had two cameras, you know, and there was a behind the scenes person, and like, there's, you know, everyone was so helpful and so happy, like, they, they were having fun. I and this was, is like, a safe for work? Uh, it was film? safe for work. Okay. And it was so funny, one of the girls, <laughs> We get the set all set up, and she comes outside to look at it, and she looks at it, and she's like, "Are we having sex out here?" <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Like she was, she was down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, oh no, that's not, that's not what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah. So where but, is this like a film like this available? Um, eventually it'll be like on YouTube or whatever. You okay. Know, just free, free to watch. Um, but. I, w- I will release it on my OnlyFans, my paid one, mm-hmm. get some of my money back because, like, you know, the costumes, I had those, like, specially designed just oh, wow. for... Oh, Yeah, it's a each, lot. each girl had their own color concept and everything, and, like, it, like we I went in deep. I yeah. <laughs> So I would like to make a little bit of money back since I did produce it, but it's, you know. 
So um, you mentioned that you are working on a movie right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So yeah, the gentle people. Um, it's currently in post, and uh, oh, so that's the movie that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good lead. <laughs> it's on topic. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. It's um. I I came up with this idea originally. Like I just had this idea of like me and a girl doing like a fairy shoot for OnlyFans, but like we're just like playing with each other's hair and like being like all cute, girly, mm -hmm. and whatever. But I was like, that's what. Okay, and. What, yeah. what's interesting about that like you know there's something needs to happen and then I just like oh what if somebody who's not invited shows up mm -hmm. and they take care of it you know like mm -hmm. okay then like a little bit of a story started to develop and I was like but you know like oh you know I start researching you know because I was like okay what are what are some actual fairy lore like what are the rules of the fae like how, how do how do they you know what, what is what's going on there you know because all you have are like, you know, watered down children's stuff available, you know? So I find right. out, you know, like all this stuff about fairies and then I decide the set will be like inside a fairy ring with mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And the mushrooms are a magical barrier. And as soon as homeboy crosses, <laughs> he gets turned into a mushroom. <laughs> and that's how mushroom rings are made. So I was like, boom. Oh, interesting. Now we have the story. Now we have like a whole little lore and everything. And like the, you know, it just kind of like happened by itself. Like I felt. Right. I don't know. So <laughs> how, um, about how long is it? It'll probably be like 15 minutes or something short. Okay. You know, but it was so fun. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> it like fun. Yeah. Like working on pretty projects on, like that is, is kind of girls it's for the very girls. yeah very privileged to be able to to do that yes you know <laughs> um okay guys we're gonna take a quick commercial break and then when we come back we're gonna talk about um the film pleasure that evelyn was in and so much more so hang tight we'll be right back we all know adam and eve is the one-stop shop for everything sexy and now with my code holly you can get any one item for 50 percent off plus 10 free gifts, and you'll even get free shipping. So spice up your sex life at adamandeve.com, but only if you use code HOLLY. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So, Evelyn, I want to kind of go back into, you know, some sex-related questions yes. since this is a sex podcast. So um, were you, like, particularly sexual growing up, or was getting into the adult industry, like, a whole new world for you? <sighs> I was some very perverted... I've always been perverted. Like I, my, <laughs> like I said, nude art. Like mm -hmm. you know, I, I I was just so inspired and like you know, like <laughs> just like wow, like I want to <laughs> draw nudes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so like you know, I was just always visually oriented like that. And I, I was quite promiscuous, quite adventurous, quite down for things that were quite risky. And um, so that's why I had like no moral ob like problem mm -hmm. like. You know, with the whole camming thing, I just jumped into it and like it. I embraced it, you know, because yeah. like I felt like finally, like oh my god, I can <laughs> kind of like show this side of me. Yeah, be you know, yeah, 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 um, and have it be celebrated and financially rewarded for it. That that was that was crazy, mm -hmm. you know, like especially you know when you have your first boyfriend and then you break up and you're just like I gave him everything and he still didn't love me and you, yeah. you know like you're like why is it not enough but like you know dudes will pay you online to look at to show your souls you yeah. know like it's yeah. like don't worry like <laughs> well it's like and it, that's, it sounds like it's kind of like an interesting transition from I'm gonna give you know my boyfriend all of these sexual things to make him love me to give me some like personal value it's when it's like actually you works. could just take those things yeah. and you could like financially monetize it and then you could kind of like take back some of that power yeah by actually making that a career path for you where you can make enough money to make fairy movies the things that you yes. always wanted to do <laughs> so good <laughs> take that <laughs> do you find that um the stigma of working in the adult industry has like followed you in your personal life at all like, i think it's you... a strength i think it's always been a strength of mine but it's only because I feel like I'm not, I don't look like a porn star, so I'm like a, a sleeper agent almost, mm -hmm. you know? Like when someone has something really like 
shitty to say about you know sex work you know i can stand up and be like well listen here <laughs> you know like you don't know what the hell you're talking about you know like so i feel like it's been a strength for me because i can give a perspective and i can speak on what i've seen in the industry and like i've talked to so many people you know like so like you know my experience is valuable and it's been valuable outside of the industry you know because people on the outside they don't know what we know yeah what is like some of the most common misinformation that you encounter um oh that porn is free you mm -hmm. know like a lot of people just really have this you know content is free mindset and I shouldn't pay for it. It's, Why should it has I no pay value. for it? Why should I pay for I, it? I would never pay for it because, you know, that looks bad on me. You know, like, that right. means I'm a loser. But it's like, losers steal. You know, like, yeah. losers can't pay for their, you know, entertainment. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all adult is, mm -hmm. is, you know, it's adult entertainment. Yeah. You know, you should, you should tip your performers. So, I, I mean, and, and, you know, people think that we're all, Got, we all got issues but it's like everyone has issues honey like yeah. what are you are you special yeah. <laughs> like, you're you're fine <laughs> okay yeah as masha would say we're all broken yes. a little bit in our own way <laughs> absolutely like yeah if people you know want to take control of their sexuality and monetize it that doesn't mean that they're broken they're they're taking what was given to them or what they're creating, you know, however they want to express themselves and expressing mm -hmm. that, you know, it's just not hurting anybody usually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as we're doing it in a safe legal, safe way with consenting adults. Yes. Always got to throw that disclaimer mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, so um, you're queer in real life. Yeah. How well do you think porn captures queerness in scenes? It's like never, never has. And it's like almost confusing because it's like, you know, in porn it's just, it's just so outlandish, you know, mm -hmm. like it's so dramatic. And like, you know, two roommates, they, they are not going to, you know, fuck. Like, are you kidding me? That would ruin the vibe of the house. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest though, I haven't had, many IRL like oh my god that's internet speak sorry in too many, real life in real life um you know in interactions where I you know I've been working on it I've been actively working on it because I don't know if people just thought I was completely straight so I've been you know trying to be a little like no. <laughs> hey I, like too, yeah. <laughs> I really like girls <laughs> <laughs> and I will always go the extra mile you know but in you know porn, I feel like I've had really bad luck with getting you know gay for pay type of chicks, you know, and like I'm not attracted to every single type of girl, you know, like it's like you're not attracted to every single type exactly. of guy, right? Exactly. So like, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's a lot of it has been very forced. I feel like I've been very good at making it convincing, you know, like. But I just I just feel like there's a big hole where, you know, like that true like <laughs> representation you know it's missing it's... well so you know what's interesting about like you you mentioned like the female gay for pay stuff which for those of you who are a little bit lost she's referring to women in the industry who do girl girl porn who aren't actually into girls and that's not all that un unusual but i think it also it falls into that whole idea that you know, well, if you only do girl girl porn, that's somehow less stigmatized. Yeah, they usually have boy friends. They usually have boyfriends that are like, I don't want you to shoot with guys. But you so. can shoot with girls because I don't find that threatening. <laughs> and so you get girls who, but also, too, there's like a yeah. weird stigma thing. I mean, especially I remember, you know, back in the day, like say 15 years ago, if you were shooting girl girl porn, you like could almost say you weren't a porn star like so back in the day when you would shoot only stills like when magazines existed and you could shoot just stills mm -hmm. and not video you could shoot like a girl girl layout for penthouse and and call yourself like not a porn star like just a nude model like there were girls who made that wow. very specific distinction there was a lot of hierarchy wow. back yeah. then where it was like this sex worker like sex oh. worker wasn't even a word right right like i'm better than you because i don't do boy girl and i only do like pretty girl girl pictorials for like 
penthouse or something like that you know so (laughs) i think there's something also too about the idea of like penetration from a man that like makes it dirtier in a way so i think there's a lot of women who come in and they're like well i'm gonna try porn but i'm only gonna do girl girl because i feel like there's less stigma attached to that and i could still like you know like a man might still accept me if i only did girl girl porn but if i did boy girl porn then like he won't date me i think there's so much of that mentality going on and it's funny because you know i do news for my only fans i don't do any sex stuff just because i'm not personally comfortable with it and people have said to me like when are you going to shoot porn i'm like probably never and then they say well what if you only did girl girl i'm like so here's the thing i actually don't like girls like i mean i like girls like I like you but I'm not attracted to women like I'm very straight so if I was to go out there and do girl girl porn because I think it's easier or less stigmatized or my husband might be okay with it like I would be one of those gay for pay girls yeah you know and if you were shooting with me I would sense that from you and it it would make me feel so weird and I would feel weird too because like I'm not into girls so it's like I feel like a lot of girls will convince themselves. So, like, you know, like, they get off on the idea of, like, this looks good to a guy. Right. Like, they get off knowing that they look good doing it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very interesting. But, like, time and place. Like, mm-hmm. do it with somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't have as many sexual experiences anymore, like, since I stopped shooting. You know, like, my personal life, I'm, like, a monk. I'm, like, a nun now. Mm. I don't know. Like, I just... <laughs> Focus on what I, my little, little worlds I'm building, and you know, just no time to be like as slutty as I used to be. I, yeah. I miss it. Yeah, I, I'll I'll come back. Someday. I mean, it's it's there for you. <laughs> Whenever you want to be slutty again, the world is your oyster. I'm being held back right now a little bit because <laughs> um, I'm like told like Evelyn, you can't do porn unless if you want these, you know, brand deals. I'm like, whoa. Mm. So are you trying to, like, break into doing, like, more mainstream yeah. directing and stuff? I mean, I've been I've been becoming really good friends with um, a few mainstream real movie directors. Mm-hmm. And, like, they're telling me, yeah, we'll, we'll write a, a role for you for in our movie. You know, like, it's like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. cool. Like, it really is all about who you know. Yeah. So, like... I mean, I've always loved background acting, too. Like, I've been background acting for three years. So, like, I just, I know that if I become porn star Evelyn Clare, just in, it, it, it'll take away from being able to sleuth and blend in mm-hmm. and be like, yeah, I'm in the background of this movie mm-hmm. at, you know, this point in time. You know, like, where's Waldo? Yeah. <laughs> Does that upset you? That, like, you feel like you have to that people pull care. away from, yeah, one yeah. thing to go to another? I think it's really, really stupid that people can't just, you know, like, let somebody be in other things. Like, why do, why do, why, like, you shouldn't, just because you did something, like, just because you ate ass once doesn't mean you have to eat ass every time. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to phrase what I'm That's thinking. That's the quote but, of the know, day. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just because you ate ass once, it doesn't make you like a chronic ass eater. Yeah. <laughs> I can do other things besides eat ass. Exactly. <gasps> I have many talents. So many talents. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, being important definitely in a lot of people's eyes pigeonholes you into the, like yeah. that one role. Like that's the only thing that you can do. I mean, I'll I'll poke fun at at it all the time like you know people will say something that has like a total innuendo and i'm like the only person in this room who can make that joke is me like yeah. and then i'll take it there i'll take it up a notch and yeah, people yeah. are like oh my god and i'm like yeah yeah i'm that person too worm for brains yeah <laughs> porn rot <laughs> yeah it, yeah i definitely i started working with a new tech company recently and i'm like in a new office with a bunch of like actually a bunch of dudes i'm literally the only girl there which i'm used to like i'm on in so many meetings i'm the only woman there like i've i'm just so used to being surrounded by men i'm totally fine with it (laughs) but um yeah there's definitely like these moments of sex sexual innuendo questions not like directed at me because i'm a woman but they just come up and i definitely go there and i see people look me like Like, and i'm like <laughs> only you knew. I could make that. Well, they do know, but I think they are surprised that um, 
it, I don't know. They're just not used to like a woman making jokes like that. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's not. It's not ladylike. Yeah. Lady. I think personally <laughs> they like it. I think it feels a little freeing. Oh, you yeah. know, they don't have to necessarily watch what they say around me. Like I can up you. Like no matter how. I mean, to an extent. To be <laughs> you fair, think you're a dirty bastard. <laughs> yeah. To be to an extent. So I mean, what's your like ultimate dream that you want to do? Like, what's your ultimate life goal? Oh man, ultimate life goal is to be the funniest greatest like little old lady who has the best stories like i hope that i can just make it to being old and like wow you're really taking this to like the end yeah and goal i I thought like maybe the next like your 10-year plan you're giving me like your 50-year plan yeah end goal i'm still streaming um (laughs) and i'm hilarious and i'm a little mad you know a little touched a little dementia maybe yeah (laughs) that sounds like my mom and i want to have like young men you know just like taking care of me Mm. i don't know like this sounds great. Not my mom. <laughs> a nice house, a garden, you yeah. know, maybe some rescues, you yeah. know, just be. <laughs> but you want to like direct. Do you want to direct? Is that I'll, like your ultimate angle? I'll probably keep directing. Okay. So I think, I think I have ma- uh, the thread. You know, if I just mm-hmm. keep pulling, you know, like it, the master plan will unravel, and I'll see the opening, and I'll be like, ah, this is the direction I need to go. But I think I'm onto it. I think the trails, you know hot and uh, you know if i just yeah. keep going you know who knows where it'll go like who knows maybe the next thing i produce it'll be like actually like worth sending to a festival yeah you know like it you know and I, my idea though is to only use hot girls from porn i love it i don't want to i don't want to be that person who's like no you're a porn star you can't be in my movie <laughs> like, yeah you have to be in the background <laughs> like no yeah i want i want the hottest woman i know to be in my movies like i love that just Just remain inclusive yeah that's great that's great so let's talk about um this movie pleasure yes um a mainstream film about the adult industry which included cameos from mark spiegler lance hart um and axel braun Mm -hmm. um can you tell us about that film and and the making of it it was so cool and that was my first time having my own trailer i felt like so cool yeah, we don't we we that doesn't happen in porn. You don't even get your you don't get your own. You get a room. room. You, maybe you're lucky if the talent gets their own bathroom. Like definitely it's rough out here. Definitely um, yeah, I had my own trailer and you know just like you know makeup artists you know and like being told you know the rundown and it was so funny. So the director is Swedish and so her accent is very thick and very funny sometimes you know and she'd need like an american on set who spoke both languages to help her translate sometimes mm-hmm. so there's a little bit of, like a communication barrier but i found it so amusing because like you know i'm just patient and like okay okay i got it all right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so working for swedish folk fun very fun as an american um sophia was so like she treated the role with utmost respect even though that she is not a real porn star Mm -hmm. um sophia um this is the lead actress the lead actress yeah i almost called her coppola because the director's on my mind (laughs) not sophia coppola Um, no why am i blanking on bella cherry is the porn star name why can't i remember i can't help you with this i haven't seen (laughs) i'm a bad friend i'm a bad friend okay um anyway she she was just very concerned with portraying authentically and mm-hmm. I just really appreciated that because you know like she didn't show up you know making fun of being a porn star it was very realistic to me because it's like you know you she was supposed to portray like that average girl who gets into porn because they're like curious and mm-hmm. they you know want to become the next big porn star or whatever and <laughs> So she comes to the U.S. with that, you know, in mind, and she gets a porn agent, and she has her first scenes, and, you know, it just isn't what, you know, like, you know, but, like, when that camera comes on, you know, it's like, you know, like, all right, time to time to go, right? Mm-hmm. And then it shows, like, just that human side that I feel like, you know, we scrub so clean and we, we remove so far away from, you know, what it takes to become that fuck toy, you know, mm-hmm. type of thing, you know? Um, my role as Ava Rhodes was kind of like that foil, you know. So Bella Cherry sees Ava Rhodes and is like, oh, my God, who is that? Like, 
why does why she seem so important? You know, like, and her friend's like, well, that's a Spiegler girl. Like, they're like the A-listers of porn. Like, this perceived, like, better than status just because you're, you know, who your agent is. And, like, <laughs> one of the directions I was given while playing Ava was, like, don't be bitchy, be aloof. Mm-hmm. You know, you're very centered in what you're doing, your own right. world. Like, you you don't even care. <laughs> like, you couldn't even care to be an actual bitch. <laughs> you know, like, because it just doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's like, in a way, I almost feel like, damn, like, sometimes I wonder if I had portrayed Ava in my actual porn career, like, if that was, like, kind of, like, the persona I had, mm-hmm. like, would that have been successful? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Movie magic. <Yeah. laughs> we don't know how real that could be, but what was interesting is like, so Sophia or Bella Cherry idolizes Ava, right? And it ends up warping her direction of what, why she wanted to do porn in the first place, because now she's in competition. Mm-hmm. And what she does, because she's in this competition of wanting to become a Spiegler girl, of wanting to become the next you know, big thing, you know, she betrays her friends, you know, like she, you know, makes choices that, you know, don't feel good to her in the end. At the end of the day, she's sad, you know, and the ending is kind of open, but what it means is just like, you know, choosing yourself and your, what you want, not just trying to be somebody else or, you know, trying to emulate what other people are doing who you think are successful, Mm -hmm. you know, just stay true to yourself. Yeah. I I think that that is such a solid, like, meaning to a movie, like, about the porn industry. But but also about, like, anything, right? Exactly, yeah. Just like itself. Yeah. In a way, it's kind of like a porn coming-of-age moment. I don't know. Right. (laughs) So I loved it. There was was some backlash from the industry saying that it wasn't a fair depiction of porn. How did you feel about that? I think it's raw. I think it's real. Axel originally said that he didn't like it, but, you know, he said to me after watching it four more times that he loves it, and he loves it now, so he takes it back. (laughs) He just didn't get it at first. Yeah. I mean, I've seen this happen a few times with, like, various documentaries, um podcasts, uh, whatever, uh, that the adult industry is, is a little bit sensitive about the way that it's portrayed, understandably so, because yeah. it's often portrayed in a, in a bad light, right? And so it's kind of like trying to find a place where we're honest about it because it's not perfect, like many other industries, but also like we don't demonize it. Yeah. Um, and I think that that balance is, is hard to make. And I think that like, regardless of how carefully you try to tread that line, there's always going to be somebody who's going to be upset because, you know, we face so much backlash and so much stigma as it is. I think a lot of people feel like, well, if you throw any negative connotations whatsoever at the adult industry in any way, it's bad for us, but it's like, but don't we need to be honest about ourselves too otherwise people like don't take it seriously if you only show the glamorized version they're not going to humanize us right as well so that's a good point pleasure is a very good film because it's raw Mm -hmm. it doesn't sugarcoat it but it shows you like the you know the both sides the it switches from like male gaze female gaze like it shows you both sides and it's very hard to watch um there's one scene that was very difficult for a lot of people to like people were leaving the theater <laughs> really just, like so brutal um with late bill bailey and nathan bronson um and it was like supposed to be like a facial abuse um oh, kind of moment and for those of you who don't know facial abuse is like a very extreme like misogynistic derogatory terrible so, yeah. website it's like it's like everything yeah. that like we're ashamed of in the adult industry yeah so it's terrible bella tells her agent after having a really great scene working for kink mm-hmm. you know and she's like i think i love being a submissive i think i love hard stuff i want to do more hard stuff yeah she's like all enthusiastic and ready to go but she gets booked for fa- like a facial abuse type thing and that's just not what she expected or wanted and you know like she tells us stop the scene and then there's the whole coercion where like well you won't get paid none of us get paid if you walk out you only need this much time you know like 
you're gonna fuck us all over kind of shit and it's like that happens yeah that fucking does happen in this industry and Absolutely. if you want to pretend it fucking doesn't you're got the wool over your eyes and you yeah. need like that's why this industry could be unsafe is because if we pretend it's not happening we don't address do we it when it, it does yeah, yeah and we don't call out like the predators and call out the the bad apples because yeah. There's always going to be, you know, bad people with bad intentions coming into in, any industry where they can easily like monetize content of any kind. Like yeah. you're always going to have that. I mean, happen, you know, and you know, sexual abuse has happened in mainstream too. You know, look at like Harvey Weinstein. Like, did everybody say like, no, stop making movies because this happened? <laughs> it just like happens everywhere. But. Yeah. I think that it's something that we do need to recognize and, and address. And I feel like, I feel like that's happening more often. Do you think, do you find that like, I feel like especially since COVID and like since OnlyFans blew up, like, do you see those I positive changes in the adult people industry? People were forced to be online and have an online presence to survive. People are becoming more connected even more so than they were in like 2017 yeah. or whatever, you know, like it's, I've noticed that it's like, Word can travel very fast, but people also forget even faster. Yeah. So, eh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's really tough. It's really tough. But, like, you know, when you see some shitty, you say something, you know, you tell somebody who's in charge. And if they're okay with it, those aren't your people, you know, like there's yeah. another bad apple. And it goes deep. And I, that's one thing that, like, even in the film Pleasure, there's a, she, she tells her agent, like, you're supposed to have my back. And he's like, well, why didn't you call me? And he's like, well, I couldn't because I was scared. And he's like, why were you scared? And he's like, because I was being raped. And he's like, you don't get to throw that word around. But it's like, in that video, you know, like, in, you know, that the scene prior to that, it very much was not consensual. Yeah. Which, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know, it shows, like, that dark side of, like, people protecting you know, like, because of money. Yeah. And also, like, that gray area that I think people have trouble with um, and performers sometimes have trouble defining, like, well, I showed up agreeing to do a sexual act and because I'm not willing to follow through with it because there's certain elements of that yeah. that I'm uncomfortable with, like, you know, I think a lot of people could say, like, well, you showed up to have sex. How can that possibly be rape? It's like, well... You can take consent away. At any time. Any time. At any time during a scene. And if that isn't respected, then what is that? Yeah. That's become non-consensual sex. Exactly. So what do you call that? Yeah. You know? But it's it's complicated. And I think the important thing is that women feel, and men too, because obviously this happens to men as well, that they feel empowered to be able to speak up and step and be heard away. And taken seriously. And be taken seriously and you know, be able to set boundaries and not feel like they're going to be blacklisted, which I think has, has changed because people are more financially independent these days, but it's still like, it still happens. Cause you know, when you're in yeah. a place with people that you don't know and you're in a compromising situation, not everybody has the strength to stand up for themselves. It's scary. Yeah. So, I mean, oof. if, if that girl comes to me and like tells me some shit though, like, Ooh, like, <laughs> That, that I do remember. I do try to remember, like, you know, who is not cool or, like, yeah. who's who's just, you know, looking for their next, like, you know. There's too many. Yeah. So. Do you feel like it's improving, though? Do you see it getting better? Do you think, like, there's been a I lot think of it'll, lip service? It, it will and evolve. It, it will just evolve with us as we evolve. I mean, even though, yes, people have fin more financial freedom because, you know, OnlyFans and other paid platforms. I do feel like, you know, now we have, you know, male content creators who are, you know, abusing the systems as well mm. by like undercutting the female performer, by like selling it for cheaper, for, you know, like there's a lot of that I've noticed and I've been talking to a lot of girls. And they're like, yeah, no, like it's a problem, mm. you know, because forgive me, but guys, you know, especially if they feel like porn should be free, they're going to sell it for cheaper. Yeah. Because why would they pay for it? You know, like, they're setting it at, you know, their own standard instead of yeah. what it's worth. Right, right. So. Yeah, that's, that's hard when it comes to, like, content trade because that's something that's 
has to be negotiated and respected by both parties. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's quite it's quite smaller of a problem, but it is still shady. Right. So yeah, things sure. will ev- problems will evolve. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I think like any industry, we're always going to have our issues. You yeah. know, and all we can do is try to talk about it and address it and try to improve them. But it's never going to be perfect. Like like any other industry, like there's no like, you know, utopia where any working place is going to be 100 percent safe, 100 percent fair. It's just like not the human condition. Yeah, so. unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately we, not. All fucked up in different ways. <laughs> this is true. Well, Evelyn, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I definitely want to get to the questions from my Patreon members, which we will do right after this. So can you tell everybody where they can find you online? I am chronically online all the time. Um, Always, except right now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But you can find me on Twitter at love Evelyn Claire, L-U-V Evelyn Claire on Instagram, official Evelyn Claire. And if you like watching like chill, you know, streams, I'm on twitch.tv official Evelyn Claire. And if you want to watch my vault of, like, content, <laughs> you can join my club, uh, Club Evelyn Claire on OnlyFans. <laughs> Fantastic. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on X. And, of course, if you want to join my Patreon, watch interviews like this live, and get access to the bonus Q&As like the one Evelyn and I are about to do, go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. Go to hollylinks.com for all of my platforms. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>